guys and welcome back to another of my YouTube videos. If you're new here, you're really welcome. My name's Laura and this video is one that I've got lots and lots of questions being asked about and I thought would be a good idea to answer all your questions in this video. So I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you'll understand what MMIs really are and how to effectively prepare for them. So first of all, what exactly is an MMI? So an MMI stands for multi mini interviews. For each medical school, there will vary how many interview stations you'll have, but it's usually between six to about 12 stations. So when talking about stations, I'm really just referring to the fact that you'll go into different rooms or little like cubicles and be asked questions from different interviewers. Each station or mini interview will be based around a different scenario and focus on a different aspect of maybe your personal statement, your reasons why you chose medicine and many other things. MMIs are a really popular format for universities to use when interviewing students. It means that they can ask you a wide range of questions and get different opinions from different people in their admissions team. You might be interviewed by doctors or admissions people. You might even be interviewed by the head of the medical department and you won't actually know who these people necessarily are. MMIs can be quite daunting, but they're actually a great opportunity if you're not that confident to begin with, as it means that each station you progress through, you can sort of relax and just get more adapted to the style and situation that you're being thrown into. An MMI can last from about three minutes all the way up to about seven minutes long. This means that you've got a short amount of time to really make an impact and a lasting impression on the interviewers. It's actually a really nice format of doing interviews as it means that you're not stuck staring at a panel of interviewers chucking questions at you for the whole amount of time. It means that you can take a break between each station and also gather your thoughts and get prepared for the next station. It also means that if you really aren't confident or comfortable with one of the scenarios that you're put into, you won't have to deal with it for more than your allotted time in that station. And then you can move on and sort of forget about it. For most medical schools, they score each section and station independently. So it won't overall have an effect on your ranking. The whole interview process can take a maximum of about two to two and a half hours, depending on your medical school. And it's actually quite a swift process as you literally just move from station to station. They also have rest stations, which basically means that you get a chance to just take a breather and sort of get your thoughts together and get ready to move on to the next station. This means that you can have a maximum of around 15 stations, including your rest stations. So what are the sort of things that you should expect on the day of your interviews? So it's really important that you remember to bring all your important documents with you, like your ID, any qualifications or any sort of things that they've asked you to fill out in advance and bring with you. I remember bringing different folders to each interview as it can be quite confusing with a lot of paper and data just chucked at you and being printed off and having to be signed and filled out. So it is worth bearing in mind that you will have to bring stuff with you and it's important that you do this in advance and get it ready. So on the day of your interview, you're not stressed and panicked trying to find all of the stuff. So when you get there, they'll check all of this information and take it off you. And they'll usually give you like a sticker or a name badge or give you like a student number so that you can be identified as you go around each station. You'll then be given a bit of like a pep talk by some of the admissions team and they'll sort of make you feel confident and comfortable with your surroundings. No one's trying to scare you off and they're all there to help. So if you are struggling with anything or a bit confused about how things are working out, make sure to reach out to one of the admissions team and just ask for a bit of help. They'll usually then give you the last opportunity to ask some questions and maybe read over your personal statement for the final time. You may then be split down into groups and sort of taken to your areas to start the process. With multi mini interviews, there will be people all around you moving around into each station at the same time as you. It can be quite off putting at the start. So it's important that you're aware of this and do just block out all of the distractions. 
Each medical school will differ, but for all my medical school's interviews, they had some sort of buzzer or bell that would ring and show that you had your first sort of minute to look over any documents or any forms that they had given you on the door of the like station. They'll give you roughly around 30 seconds to read this and then you'll be hearing another bell or buzzer and then being told to go into your station. When you get in there, it's important that you sort of shake their hand and just get relaxed and feel confident. They'll then ask you a bit about what you've just read or maybe a bit about you or your personal statement. Some stations will also be role play and it's important that you sort of assume your character straight away. You don't want to be acting as yourself and then suddenly like breaking into a character role. If you'd like any advice on what role play questions sort of get asked quite frequently and also how you actually do well in role play scenarios, then do check out my videos that I'll be making all about how to answer interview questions and role play questions as well. So once your interview has sort of come to a close, even if you're halfway through a sentence, you will hear a buzzer or the bell again, signaling that time has finished and you have to move out of that station. Make sure to shake their hand and say thank you and then move out of that station and onto your next one. Don't waste time dandering between stations as sometimes you can have quite a walk around a hall or something to get to the next station. Each second really counts and it's important that you read any information given to you and have the best opportunity of feeling relaxed and confident as you enter each station. While you wait outside each station, make sure not to let anything from your previous station put you off and sort of block out anything that's happened already. It's also important that you don't think too heavily about what you're going to say and feel really forced and rushed and unprepared. You also don't want to sound over prepared and like you've had a spiel written out and you're just basically reading off a piece of paper. So once you've finished, you'll be really relieved to hear the final buzzer. And at that point, you'll all be directed back to your original hall or room that you were first welcomed into. Here you'll get all your qualifications, your certificates and any other information that you passed over to them back. You'll also be able to collect all your other belongings and even just have a chit chat with some of the students that might be there or other people that are wanting to apply to that university as well. Make sure not to feel like everything's competitive and they're all your competition. At the end of the day, you may actually be studying with some of them there in the coming years. For one of the interviews that I did, I actually had an extra bit added on to the end of the interviews. Whenever I was at my interviews for Keele University, I had to actually go and sit a maths exam afterwards. This was quite off-putting as after you had just done all of your MMIs and then we were all directed into the computer suite to then do the maths exam, it was kind of a bit deflating and quite nerve-wracking. But once that was done, then we were free to leave and gather all our things and then depart. It's important that you are aware of each medical school's interview process as they will differ quite a bit. So do check out the website and any information you get given when you're given your interviews. So if you want to find out more information on how to actually prepare for interviews and also what the question styles are really like and how they like you to answer them, do check out the rest of my videos as I'm going to be making a series on how to do well at interviews for medical school. It's a really, really vital part of the process to get right, as without doing well at interview, you won't get an offer. Interviews can be nerve wracking and daunting, but if you are prepared and you kind of know what to expect, you will not need to be nervous or fearful of them. So I hope this video has given you a better understanding of what to expect during MMIs. And if you want to find out more information about them, do check out the rest of my videos and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button down below. And if you found this useful, hit that like button as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.